All right, so besides the bow hold, one of the first things we're gonna be doing when we start to play the violin is figure out a comfortable violin hold. And they figured out that they wanted to put an instrument like this up on the shoulder many hundreds of years ago before chin rests and shoulder rests existed. But over the years, people are trying to create something that's more ergonomic and comfortable. And as our technique has gotten more advanced, um, some of these things have been developed as well just to kind of create um, some more stability. So whether or not you decide to go with a chin rest or a shoulder rest is quite personal. There are some people who are returning to those early you know, 1500s, 1600s um, versions of technique where we didn't have a chin rest or shoulder rest. But here, we're just gonna talk about comfort. And um, later on, you know, as people get more advanced, they can decide for themselves whether or not they wanna be a super traditionalist or not. Um, even if you find something that feels fairly comfortable in the beginning, it's worthwhile to return to it every so often. It might even be in the beginning, you know, you find something on the first lesson that feels semi-comfortable and then a month later we're adjusting and then a year later we're adjusting. Just as we get to know the instrument more and we get to know our bodies more, oftentimes we'll start to be aware of little things that are maybe feeling a little bit less than comfortable and then we'll readjust and it can feel like going back to square one but it really shouldn't because everyone does go through this. So let's start with the chin rest and the chin rest is something that basically comes with every violin that you could buy now. I, I don't really see violins being sold without chin rests. So that's good on one hand, but not so great on another because most of the chin rests that come with violins are not comfortable for most people. They're flat across and they don't have much of a slope in this direction either. So, you know, it could fit a certain type of person, but everyone's jaw is different. And we call it a chin rest, but really it's a jaw rest. So it needs to somehow contour to the left side of your face and underneath, and it really needs to have something that can hook underneath at least a little bit so that we can draw the violin, violin in towards us, or the viola, draw it in towards us so that it's not falling down. So if we see a lot of this tippy stuff and it feels like it's sliding off, oftentimes we feel like, hmm, maybe I need a better shoulder rest, but we really need to look at the chin rest first. And then yes, the shoulder rest can help. But um, we see mine here, and we see quite a contour, so we see the hill and the valley, and then in this direction we see quite a contour, a hill and a valley. So my jaw bone is gonna sit down right here. Maybe I'm gonna get a little bit of a chin on this side, but it's really that whole jaw, and then this hill here is gonna just sit up right underneath, and that's gonna pull that violin in towards me, so that as soon as I just roll my head weight over to the chin rest, the violin is gonna stay up. Okay, so if this was just more flat across, a few things that would happen for me, and I started off for many years playing on a chin rest like this just because I didn't know, no one told me. And I ended up with a violin hickey, which was um, a scar that would scar and bleed and scar and bleed, and it's, it's just unfortunately always gonna be with me now, I think. But thankfully, ever since I changed up my chin rest, which was now probably 15 years ago, but, um, but it hasn't actually been painful and there hasn't been any, any extra scarring. So I think it's just a relic from the past now. But if I had that old chin rest, we would see that my head would be sort of pitched forward here. And I found that the violin was doing this a lot more back then, because again, I didn't have the scoop here. So this is much more comfortable. And this was a chin rest that uh, it's called the Hamburg chin rest which is a style you can get, and then I had it customized a little bit further, which I'll tell you about in a moment. But um, there are many different types of chin rests that do have some kind of a hill and a valley, hill and a valley, and I would go for something like that, and, and best is if you could go to a violin shop and you can just try out a bunch of different chin rests. They're quite easy, it just takes a few minutes, but you can take these brackets and using a little tool, we can just ratchet them off and on, and you can put the, the chin rest on and off. If you don't have a violin shop close to you, then I would recommend um, possibly just ordering several that look like they might be a fit, and then um, you can always send the ones you don't like back. So um, anyhow, the chin rest makes a huge difference, and besides the chin rest, the height. So most of the time we have these kind of low profile chin rests, but um, now it's becoming more and more common to be able to get an actual lifted chin rest that you can buy. Back when I had this one customized, 
that wasn't so prevalent. So I actually had them put, it's about three, four millimeters underneath. And so I'm not sure if you can see this with the angle there, maybe a little bit. Um, it's the same wood color, so it's hard to see, but I have a little bit of a lift underneath and they had to move the holes around so that that would still work. But just a little bit of a lift was all I needed so that without a shoulder rest, I'm still filling up this gap here between the collarbone and my jaw. And that's really important to avoid any sort of seesaw action with a shoulder rest. Or if you wanna go without a shoulder rest, then it's very necessary. But either way, so now when I drop my head, my head weight just goes and drops the violin right down into my collarbone. So I have a little bit of contact there. And then I'm not getting kind of what I had before, which is you put your head down and then of course the shoulder rest is sitting up here and there's a gap between the collarbone and the violin. So you put your head down and then the violin does this thing. And you just keep on having this problem which feels very unstable. So we want a certain amount of freedom, but we also want a certain amount of stability. And so just, you know, a little bit of a gap here so that I can rest my head weight down. If you get too high and then you're kind of craning your neck up and over, you're not going to get the weight that you need. So you need to have your head just rolling forward a little bit. You can just kind of feel the back of your neck, that just the kind of the top of your spine and the back of your, your head there. And if you just imagine your spine staying straight and then your head just rolling forward a little bit, like you're nodding, that's what you're gonna to wanna to get. And so finding a chin rest that allows you to do that is really necessary, but then you see I'm going hands-free. So this is something where if we're gonna go without a shoulder rest versus a shoulder rest, the two paths start to diverge. Because if you don't have a shoulder rest, it does require that your hand is gonna hold up the violin at least to some degree. So you're gonna to have to make sure that you work very carefully with the left hand to make sure it doesn't end up grippy if you're gonna go without a shoulder rest or with a shoulder rest. I find that students can get grippy either way. But starting with some exercises, maybe some sliding exercises and other things where you can just feel like you can have that space here and still have some support with your hand without having to you know actually raise your shoulder that's very important if you go without a shoulder rest personally for me we see just after a couple seconds there how my collarbone is not happy that way <laughs> so you could always you know if you have less of a prominent collarbone I, I find the people that that can go without shoulder rests quite well they have like you can't really even see their collarbone unless maybe they, I don't know, do something with their muscles. So um, I'm not a great candidate for that, I've found. But um, even those folks, oftentimes they might have like a little cloth or pad or something. Um, but if you wanted to do just something really simple, you could always just take up a rolled cloth, put that underneath, and or a sponge, you can buy sponges. And that gives at least a little bit. And if I had that maybe on there with some rubber bands, it wouldn't be sliding around as much and that could potentially work. But a little bit of something underneath, really just to kind of feel like there's a little bit of support kind of underneath the collarbone and on the chest side more than the shoulder side. And then that's a lot easier just to feel the freedom over here. If you don't want your arm holding up the violin the whole time. And then I personally like the Wolf shoulder rest. I like the Forte Secundo because it has kind of this half moon shape and this is bendable metal. So I've bent this to suit my shoulder and I like how it just kind of hugs around my neck and it just fills up a little bit of that gap. Again, I have the gap between my jaw and my collarbone filled up by the actual chin rest in the violin. So what this is basically doing is it's just, you see how little gap there is here just a little bit kind of out a little further as my shoulders slope down and then most of it is going to be here on the chest side where I'm getting some support there and so then my shoulders can stay level and my head can stay relaxed and I still have that contact here so the violin feels very secure so that feels good to me but everyone has to find their own way but some factor like that with the chin rest contour, the shoulder rest contour, or going without. And then we have to talk about, okay, you know, once we get these things, where are we gonna put the violin in space? So for most of us, 
we want to have the violin about 45 degrees out, but a better way to determine that is to start off in rest position and to take the left hand to wrap around, so come down to the shoulder and to wrap the fingers up and around like on the G string, like as if you're in fifth, sixth position. And then that's, once we come up, that's gonna help determine like how much flexibility we have in the shoulder and how much slope we need, how much angling we need. So oftentimes, just how we set up there and you might go without the shoulder rest at first, just to see where that's gonna be. Does it feel more comfortable here or there, somewhere in the middle? Where does that feel like you can, you can make that adjustment? Now I'm quite flexible here, but some folks might not have as much flexibility in the back of the shoulder. And so that's, you know, gonna really help kind of make or break some of this technique later on. Um, so you need to find that spot. And then if we are having trouble, you know, like if we're very tight there, we might want to tilt a little bit more and that helps so that we're not so extreme here. So if we're too flat, sometimes I see students show up and they want the violin very flat, but then we see how extreme this has to be. And of course, again, I'm flexible so I can do it, but that isn't going to allow me very, like I'm going to have to really press because it's not going to allow me very much just natural arm weight over on the G string. But if I have it a little bit more tilted, then I can just kind of use gravity here to my advantage. And that's something to learn about later. But just as a setup initially, that's a good way to do it. So I'm just coming here and there, and then what's the slope? So for most of us, about 45 degrees out, and then this slope here isn't quite 45 degrees. I would say it's maybe, for me, 30 degrees, I wanna say, um, <laughs> give or take. Um, and then you can just come around to the E string, slide down, come around to the E string, and then see, like if it's too sloped this way, then I would have to kind of be coming at the E string this way, which of course, that doesn't make any sense. That doesn't feel comfortable. So hopefully the E string, you're basically hanging vertical. The G string, you're coming out here just a little bit. Maybe you can start to see the elbow peeking out if you look over the edge of the violin. Something like that feels pretty good for the left arm. And then when I add the bow, I can get a little bit more detailed with this. So depending on the arm length, you wanna be able to get to the tip of the G. And if you had shorter or longer arms, that could determine where we wanna take this, right? So, and, and also kind of where the violin sits here is maybe a factor for longer versus shorter arms. So you can play around with that a little bit. Um, yeah, it's kind of, oftentimes they, they have people maybe even get centered um, chin rests if they have quite short arms. Um, so that could be something, you see if I, I have fairly long arms. So if I was up here, I would be, you know, very much in danger of going off the violin versus with longer arms, maybe we're, we're down the chest a little bit. So there's that, and then similarly, you know, if I had longer arms, maybe I would be up a little bit more. If I had shorter arms, maybe I'd be down a little bit more. Is that right? Yeah, <laughs> I have to think about it. <laughs> Can't grow or shorten my arms just right now, can I? Um, but then also for the angling, so the slope, um, I should say, that was angling, for the slope, for the G-string, I don't want to be, like if I was very flat, my shoulder, my right shoulder would have to be way up here to get to the G string and not hit the D, right? So that doesn't look very comfortable. So how I have it would be more here. So I'm just coming kind of straight out or maybe even a little bit down would be fine. I think right there is pretty much my limit before I start hitting the, G, the D string. And then for the E, if I swivel across, I don't want to be, if I'm too sloped, then I kind of have to cross, you know, cross my belly, cross my waistline to get over here, and then I'm, I don't have the natural um, gravity that I can use on the bow side either. I'd have to kind of hold my, hold my bow kind of almost up or at least to the side, and that's not so good. So that's dealing with this slope and what you want to set up. So those are all the angles that we need to think about. And then of course the comfort here is very important. And if we can get that at least semi-comfortable at first, then we can start to learn some open string bowings 
and you know some early songs and then you can start to see like where maybe the tension start to creep in pretty common for people to start to have tension maybe in the wrist maybe doing some of this kind of stuff maybe here if we have a violin setup that isn't the best for us so if you start to notice some of that stuff and of course sometimes it's just psychological sometimes it's we don't want to drop it, you know, it's a nice instrument, but, um, but sometimes it's just because it's, it's falling, it feels like it's falling. But just recognizing that you don't really need a lot to hold it up, right? We just need one finger, basically. So it's just that balance, right? Getting that weight and the violin comes up. So again, it really comes back to the chin rest. You get that set up, then from there we just start kind of working around and uh, we get something that works. All right, good luck.